Since Russia invaded Ukraine, Australia, the US and much of Europe have been pursuing the assets of Russian oligarchs. We're joining with European allies to find and seize their yachts, their luxury apartments, their private jets. Oligarchs in London will have nowhere to hide. The West are now proud custodians of tens of billions of dollars worth of property, planes, bank accounts, racehorses, and of course the ultimate symbol of Russian wealth. A luxury super yacht has been seized by Fijian authorities. The Italian authorities in the port of Trieste seized the ship known as Sailing Yacht A. French officials seized the $120 million Amore Vero. Russian oligarchs really seem to love their mega yachts. Not anymore they don't, because we've seized them. So, what's up for grabs in the Klepto Capture Showcase? John? Ahoy, comrades! It's the Dilba! Owned by Alicia Usmanov, a metals and telecommunications baron who made his first fortune selling plastic bags. Be the czar of the bar on the Amadea. Owned by gold tycoon Suleiman Karimov, which has its own lobster tank. She's the creme de la Kremlin. It's Sailing Yacht A. Owned by coal baron Andrei Melnichenko. And you'll be Vladimir Tutin in a new Shadowzard, the massive 140 meter mega yacht, rumored to be owned by Putin himself. John Deke speaking. But freezing all these assets was the easy part. The big question facing governments now is what can we do with them all? Most countries know what they want to do, sell everything and use the money to help rebuild Ukraine, which sounds like a great idea. But it's not that easy. The sanctions only prevent the oligarchs from transferring or moving their assets. They remain the legal owners. The governments can only actually take title to an asset if the oligarch is charged with a specific crime. And the asset has to be tied directly to the crime itself. And unless they've robbed a bank and made a slow, majestic exit on their getaway yacht, it's very difficult to tie anything to a specific crime. It's hard enough trying to prove who legally owns most of these assets. Oligarchs have spent three decades amassing these fortunes and hiding them. There's shell company upon shell company, and so trying to follow all of that back and figure out exactly who the owner is is very difficult, and it's done that way on purpose. It's not as if there's a document in a vault somewhere that says the owner of asset X is you know, Vladimir Putin. Damn it. Putin's thought of everything. <laughs> and then there's the problem of the law itself. Oligarchs hide their wealth in Western countries because we don't just let governments take people's stuff without due process. In England, this goes back to the Magna Carta. In the US, it's enshrined in the Constitution and it forms the basis of Australia's foundational instrument, the castle, on VHS tape. We spent decades turning a blind eye as oligarchs parked and concealed their wealth in the West. Unpicking it all could take years, and every day these assets sit unused, they're losing value that could go to Ukraine and costing us money. Fiji was reportedly paying $1.2 million a week just for the Amadea to sit at one of its ports before they got jack of that and had it towed back to the US. Of course, the US might be able to bypass all of these pesky laws if it simply declared war on Russia, but I'm reliably informed that that could have some unfortunate nuclear consequences. So instead, the US and EU are trying to make it easier to link these assets to crimes by making new crimes. Today, President Biden announced new legislation that would streamline the seizure and liquidation process for Russian billionaires' assets. The legislation would make it a new crime quote, to knowingly or intentionally possess proceeds directly obtained from corrupt dealings with the Russian government. Let's just make owning a yacht a crime. I mean, surely owning a boat worth half a billion dollars is evidence you've probably broken the law somewhere. Hello? Yeah, just hang on a sec. It all looks so complicated, some have even suggested that we just let oligarchs buy their way out of these sanctions, which would at least be consistent with the founding principle of Western democracy, that the rich can buy their way out of anything. In the meantime, Ukraine desperately needs money, and we have a whole bunch of cool stuff that's extremely difficult to sell. Hi, you saw the ad? Yes. yes. And you are... Padamir Vluton. Uh, sure, I'll take rubles. Okay, pick it up whenever you like. <laughs> Bye.
What a friendly guy.